I want everyone to imagine that the year is 2024, and the world has decided there's no real value in sports. You see, there's been a committee put together called the We Really Don't Care About Sports Committee, and it consists of parents who are tired of taking their kids to and from sporting events and practices, and kids who, with their free time after school, only want to do one or two things. One is only homework. Two, play on those social devices. You know, those cell phones that they play on, right? The thing is, this group has gathered around the world to ban sports. I want you to think about something. What would this world look like if we didn't have sports? Think about that. Ponder that thought. I'm going to help you out. Probably the first thing that would happen is there would be massive layoffs. ESPN, NFL Network, Fox Sports. You see all these sports broadcasting networks? Why do we need news on something that doesn't exist. And for all you fans out there who like to travel on the weekend, you know those tailgating parties to the colleges that sometimes you take your kid to the big house in Michigan? Or you Sparty fans, and we can't forget about the horseshoe. That's right, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Because all you alumni know, at that time of the year, what do you do? It is a way to get together, to bond, to look at what? Who can win and you can have those rights. Well, it's gone. Maybe we turn the big house into a networking place, because it seats, what, over 100,000, right? And for you soccer moms and dads, I got something for you. You know those bumper stickers that you have on your vans and cars? They got to go. You know why? We don't understand them, remember? It's been banned. You see, some of us, this might devastate. Those of us that have played sports, Maybe we're still playing sports, or maybe we're just like sports, but there's those out there that's going to do this. You know what? I never played sports. I don't even like sports. Quite frankly, to me, sports is just a game. Oh, really? Just a game. Okay. But is it? Is sports a game? What if I tell you when a child spays sports, it can help them beyond the game. And this has been proven that when a child plays sports, it can help their self-esteem. They've been even known to do better in school. And who wouldn't want to feel better about themselves, wouldn't you? And who wouldn't want them children, their children, to feel better about themselves as well? So about a year ago, me and my family were out, and a gentleman noticed us. He said, excuse me, sir, are you Coach Edwards? I said, oh, you were, yes. I didn't know who this man was. He said, years ago, you and your father coached my grandson. If you don't know, my father, I was involved when I got out of college coaching high school track and field. He said, the impact that you had on my grandson changed his life. He told me, you didn't know. At one point when he was a child, he could barely walk. Doctors didn't know if he'd be able to walk or even run. By the time he got to high school, he got better. But things were missing. But he made a point to his grandfather and his family, I would try a sport. You know what that sport was? Track and field. He said, you don't know, but I used to travel. I had to fly to see him perform. And during this process, I watched him transform. He said his confidence. He said it was so many things. He would even call me when I wasn't there to talk about you and your father. Wow, did we plant that seed without knowing it and didn't know in the future how it grew? He broke down emotionally and started crying and said, thank you so much. Wow, is it just a game? He cried and I got emotional too because you know what? We impacted a life. Stage is attacking me. <laughs> Stop that, Red. I noticed this, and you know what? Here's the thing about sports. There's values in it that are gems that sometimes are overlooked. Self-esteem, self-confidence. I believe in the I am. Kids know that coaches say 1% better every day. Reflects in the mirror is you. Those are things that are valuable beyond the lights. And what is also this? How many of you here in corporate America, you can relate to this, 
How many of you have done those team building exercises, right? Get together. Oh, gosh, we have to go to these workshops. Personal professional belt. Yes, you better. Why? Companies based on what? A vision and a mission. If there's not harmony between the departments, what's happened? I promise you, your company will not survive. Don't you do that in sports? Don't we have a vision and a mission, bringing people together that might not know each other to build relationships like a family? I think so. And you might not know this. CEOs, top Fortune 500, a high percentage played sports. And I want all you young ladies in here, listen to me very carefully. Step four, listen. There was a study done by Ernst & Young. 80% of female Fortune 500 executives play some type of competitive sport in their life. 80% Fortune 500. And they attribute the skills that they learn in sports, help them in the boardroom. Wow, 80% is a big number. That's huge. I think a trail of success is being left with clues there. And this is what you need to know too. If you are familiar with Nike, these three companies, if you own a shirt, pants, if you golf, oh, golf is gone too, why? It's a sport. Sorry, golfers, that's gone. But how many of you own some slacks, maybe shirts? You don't even have to play sports. You know it. You wear it to work. I guarantee you someone in here has on Under Armour. And you kids, I know how you get about those J's, those Air Jordans, right? If I had on some right now, I'd be a rock star. I'd be like, Coach, rock the Jordans. Did you see, can I get those? No. Why? Because sports are banned. Oh, Mom, these companies all have something in common. You know what it is? Don't tell me. I just Again, ponder that thought. All of their founders play sports. The vision that they had, the passion to put into the products, you wouldn't have today. Because the research, development, the technology, the winning of those came from a dream of somebody that done what? Played sports. It's not just the game. And this is what the we don't really care about sports committee doesn't understand. You see, they might and I use the word very lightly, they might value sports, but they don't understand how real valuable sports are, and there's a difference. See, when you value something, you might respect it, but when something is valuable to you, it has worth, and it is worth the investment, either time, money, or resources. Think about your children's education. We're here, this is a school, right? Child doesn't do good in school. Maybe their grades are suffering. Well, you know, they might be getting this, honey, we need to help them get a better grade because the GPA to help them get what? To a top university. Okay, let's get a tutor. Oh, my. This tutor's kind of expensive. Honey, we've done our research. This is a good tutor. It's worth the investment. That ROI, return on investment, is worth it, right? And to me, hear this out. The benefit of sports is like a ripple effect. Imagine if you dropped a pebble in the ocean. So when this girl plays a sport, when this young man plays a sport, and these children play a sport, it impacts you, your community, and even the world. Now, you're probably saying, this man is banning sports. What is he talking about? Going to end the world next? What's going on with this guy? No, I want you to think about something. This is based on probably true events like TV shows. If you watch Netflix, I'm feeding you another, what, season. Remember the COVID? Remember the pandemic? What happened? Sports weren't banned, but what? They were put on hold. All you soccer moms and dads, you know, you used to going around on the weekends, right? That was stopped. Kids around probably antsy at home, right? Answer me this. How did this impact you, the coronavirus? How did it impact your families? I know it impacted mine. You see, but my paradigm, I grew up around sports. I was submerged into a culture of education, fitness, and healthy lifestyle. My father, as I mentioned earlier, was my high school and track coach. As a little child, a tyke, he would take me to football practice. At that time, it was double sessions. It's that far ago, where in the summers, teams would practice in the morning and afternoon, and I would make a custom cabana out of blocking these dummies. And I'll sit there with a squeeze bottle as they push the sled across the football field. And my mother was an impact also. As I would travel back and forth, as I got into organized sports, it wasn't talking about, son, you could have caught that pass. Why did you showboat and do prime time in the end zone? Why are you doing these things? No, it wasn't about that. It was about life lessons. My father would say, son, have you ever seen a pigeon among eagles? 
My mother would say, cancel, clear that. Here goes a tweetable moment for you. Don't fight back. It takes you to the past. Fight forward. Ooh, you might want to tweet that. Don't fight to the back because those trials and tribulations of negativity takes you there. Fight forward, just like there's no such thing as failure. And I learned these things. And when the pandemic hit, we were a fit, active family. But just like everybody else, we were on quarantine. Week two, week four, nah, we good. Week six, I seen people run around like it was the end of the world. Sky is falling. Oh my gosh, we were like, we're cool. We're buckled in. What are we going to do? Oh, spring's coming. Let's get these bikes off, dust them, and let's ride. And you know, we saw something interesting there. What used to be this, empty streets and things, we took our local university. We went there because you know what? What was closed? Even universities, right? Beautiful campus. We rode trails. We went through the community, and I saw something brilliant. I saw people out riding bikes, waving. I felt like we were part of the club. Oh, they're like us. Yeah, that was beautiful. Another thing I noticed is this. In neighborhoods that used to be basketball courts and driveways, it's like landscape, honey. We have a basketball court. We do, too. We only use it once a year. Oh, we do, too. Now they were out using it, playing with the kids, kicking ball. Minded me when I grew up as a kid, riding a bike through the neighborhood. It was a beautiful thing because it taught us certain things. In the morning, it would be riding because all kids in my era got out and played. As we rode through the neighborhood, we would think, okay, what are we going to do today? Kind of like Huckleberry Finn meets the Little Rascals. Whoever had a ball, we would say, hey, this is the game today. Let's play some football. Play in the street. Oh, this is Sunday. You know it's going to be busy. Oh, let's ask the neighbors. Can we use their lot? Okay. What did it teach us? We didn't focus on the problem. We focused on the solution. We could have focused, oh, we can't play. No, no, no. What did that teach us? And how to communicate and build relationships. But see, this is the one end of it. And I understand I might be biased because... Usually, what we see is what is part of what we're used to, our paradigm. Because I know on the other end of the spectrum, it was something else. Some people are saying, yeah, you know what? That wasn't me. That wasn't my family. This is true. It's true. A lot of people weren't out there. But remember this. There was some sedentary issues that even today, you talk to any doctor, you took in the medical field, they're still recovering from the pandemic. And we know this was an issue before the pandemic with kids being physically active. And one of the big issues was this, obesity as a crisis. There were studies done between 2017 and 2020. 14 million kids were affected. And that's only in the U.S. We haven't gone global. The number is what? You can Google this. You can research it. It's out there. The other thing is, during the pandemic, there was a research case study done on kids, 400,000 on their BMI numbers. 400,000 kids. You know what those BMI numbers double, done? They doubled. Doubled. If you don't know what BMI means, it means body mass index. You go to your doctor, I mean, if you go through physical therapy rehab, those are some of the things when they come for an evaluation that they get on you. And it tells us our body fat ratio as it relates to our weight and our height. Why is that important, Coach? That was David. Well, I'm gonna tell you why. Because it's kind of a screen, let us know what might be a potential problem in the future. Their ROI, if we put in the research, a resource we find it valuable, you know that is that we don't want our children having chronic conditions that could have been avoided by something easy as physical activity. Now, here's the thing. That's the physical end of the pandemic. We know sports was beneficial. But what about the mental end, right? You look at kids, we know there was what? A lot of remote learning. Socialization was put on a hold because what couldn't they do? They couldn't get together. They couldn't play together. And we know that these stresses had a mental impact on them. It impacted their what? Mental health. This is a huge concern right now, not just with kids, but it's also with adults. And it's been proven with research, another resource, that when a child plays sports, it can help with stress, it can help with depression, and it can just help with just sadness alone, anxiety. And this is what another thing I want you to understand. People might say, well, coach, that was then. We're out of the pandemic. Why should we care? Well, kids, even before the pandemic, the numbers were low playing sports. After the pandemic, the numbers have gone up statistically, but in comparison to where they were already low. What's happened is this. If you're familiar with the Aspen Institute, here goes a valuable resource that's worth looking into. Their project play proved that active youth do better in life. If parents get involved, it also makes a what? A healthy community. 
this is important, and to me it's this. It's as if a valuable resource through sports is slowly disappearing, and it's not enough of us sounding the horn of how valuable it is. So I want everybody to do this. We're going back to 2024 with different mindset. I want you to imagine again it's 2024. You want to have your child be better with self-confidence, their self-image. You want them to be better mentally and physically. You want them to have better focus and discipline. What are you all going to do? Get out and let them play. Play outside, kick a ball, run around, hop, do whatever it is. Jump, jump rope. Old days we used to do with hopscotch. Even us boys would do that. And you get them some toys, and this is what you find out. Even a ball. Go to the dollar store. Get one of the plastic bats because this is a gateway to sports. And we know that sports, the value of it is way more beneficial than not playing sports. So when this young lady plays a sport, or this young man, these children, or you invest in the sports because you know how valuable sports are, we all win. We all win. And who knows, one day in the future, your child or, or all you young ladies and gentlemen that are out here that are young, you're on that stage yet where you're adults, you might want to motivate, educate, and inspire the next generation like we are. Thank you.